Alrighty, so you've watched all the guides. You've played your simulator, you've bought your car, you're ready to hit the track. So you're, you're looking at entering a Keeper Eat Day, you've signed up, you've got your car, you're ready to go. What do you need to pass scrutineering at one of our days? Firstly, when you rock up to the track, you're gonna be looking for one of the boys in the pink or orange vests. They're one of our volunteers or staff members. So they're gonna be going over your car, telling you what does and doesn't pass on the day, and it could mean you cannot drive. So it needs to be done and it's very important. We're gonna be going through what's in the engine bay, the little things that need to be done up tight, not loose, uh, you know, fire hazards and holes in firewalls and stuff, make sure they're all buttoned up. Inside the car with roll cages, what having a roll cage means and what not having a roll cage means you can and can't do. Uh, fuel systems, wheels, everything, the lot. It's all written down on our fat page here, which the guys go through when you rock up to the track. So it needs to be right, mate, and make sure you get it done. Alrighty, we're gonna start at the front of the vehicle. So the first thing we're looking at before we open this bonnet is that everything on the front of the car is nice and secure. So we've got our headlights that are nice and tied in. Bonnet, all the bolts are in place. Nothing's gonna fly off the car when you're doing warp speed down into turn one. So coming into the engine bay, the first things we look at, we, we generally, we're pretty relaxed at Keep It Reet. We don't, we don't knock people back on, on silly little things. It's a bit of common sense with us. Uh, we do have our rules and there's certain things that will not pass and we cannot let you on track. But in general, generally speaking, if we see something that could be tidied up at the next event, we'll let you go back and tidy that one up. We expect it to be done at the following one though. So first thing I'm looking at when I look at this engine bay is throttle has a return spring. Very important, we can't have uh, throttle getting stuck on the track or sending you into the wall uncontrollably. We want that nice throttle return spring. So that means when Jace is on the throttle on the limmy, it comes back nice and quick. So moving from the throttle, I can see in this engine bay, Jason has a catch can. So what that means is the, the car is invented and we're plumped back into the motor. He's decided to plumb his oil ventilation from the heads into a catch can. So what that is up here needs to be nice and secure cannot be leaking. As you guys can see, it's very close to the exhaust system. So if there was any leaks present here, it'd be a very big hazard, a fire hazard on the exhaust right here. So I can see that's all nice and plumbed in. There's no leaks and secure. That's a good one, that one. The other thing I'm looking at when I get up the back of this vehicle is there's no holes in the firewall. So a big no-no, and you guys have probably seen on YouTube, many people catch on fire in their engine bays. What happens is if there's any holes in these, end, these firewalls here, they can go through to the cabin. What it means is when you've got fuel and oil heading into your cabin, that's a bad recipe for a fire inside the car. We don't want that, we don't want you getting burnt. So that's a big one to look for. All right, some other stuff I'm looking for here. As I look down through under the, under the plenum here, I'm looking for any oil leaks uh, or any fuel leaks. A lot of fuel lines coming up into the fuel rail here. Um, we can't have any leaks, none whatsoever, especially when it comes to fuel. So uh, anything in general, it's just basic common sense on um, engine bay stuff. Obviously no, like I said, no holes into the cabin is a very, very big no-no. Um, any, any general leaks or anything can cause a hazard. We can't have leaks on the track during the day, obviously drifting, especially if it gets wet, turns to ice, any oil on the track. Plus the racetracks don't love us when we spill any oil on that track. So. Um, general common sense stuff it's it's really not not anything too specific um, if you do anything to your cards it's got to be done in a safe and, and sensible manner um, and it's got to be done properly Alrighty, moving on from the engine bay um, one thing that's important at our track days is that your hazards light, hazard lights work on the front and rear of your car what that means is if you are broken down on the track uh, safety, the safety crew team that have the recovery vehicle they can come and see if there's anything wrong with your car whether you need help you could be on fire in worst case scenario, or you could just need a tow back to the pits. So that's why it's important to have your hazards working. So the next thing is we do a lot of Friday night drifts. So this is not technically a must have for a day event, but a Friday night drifts, you must have your front and rear lights working. As you can see, the 33's lights work. That obviously is a straightforward one. We need to see where you are on the track and when you're coming. As we move around the car, from the lights to the wheels. So basically what a scrutiny is going to check on your wheels is that all your wheel studs are in place. It's all too often I run it, we run a track day here and people's wheels go flying off on the first lap. There's nothing more annoying. One damages your car, damages the track. So make sure we have the wheel nuts all in place. We do a little bit of a shake test here. You can see everything's nice and solid. No wheel bearing damage or anything. Generally, if a wheel bearing's had it, had it at the end of its life, it'll, um, 
it'll have a little bit of play in it. Um, that can get worse and worse and worse. Again, we are flying off. We were flying off could mean it also hit someone in the head in the crowd. We absolutely cannot have that. Uh, as I look through here, I'm just looking at the brakes, inspecting, making sure there's no cracks in the discs. Everything looks functioning, just a little shake test. Just again, common sense, like the engine bay. It's just all common sense. But as I'm moving further down the car, we're checking everything, making sure all all uh, panels and stuff are nice and that everything closes, nothing's gonna fly off. Even though I reckon Jason's lost one of his weather shields before, but whoosh. <laughs> everything's all good. Um, the mighty, the wing that's met quite a few walls, she's a bit wobbly, but she's sturdy. Uh, moving around the back of the car now. Oh, we've got a problem, guys. She's failed scrutineering. As you can see, Jason's given the back of this car quite a hard time, but we're, we're strict, but we're not too strict. We understand things cost money. And when it comes to tail lights these days in R33 Skyline, we're looking at, I don't know, probably, probably 500 plus dollars for a rear set of tail lights these days. So if this car rocked up to a day where I was scrutinizing, I wouldn't knock it back. It's because it does have a light working. Indicator is working. We're not gonna criticize on that because at night time we can still see that light. It's not the end of the world as long as it does work but I believe she does have a globe out. So that's a big fail for me for now. Jason, fix your light, bring it back to scrutineering. That's what you'll get told if you bring a car like this up to us. But other than that, rear end looks quite nice. It's got a dirty big bash bar on it, which is, which is a little bit overkill, I reckon, but Jason loves to slap this car against the wall. Um, as you can see, exhaust is intact, nice and sturdy, not coming off. Something we see a lot of drift days is people's exhaust dropping off, bolts not done up. Um, quite annoying, generally get told to come off the track and fix that type of thing. So, I mean, other than, other than the one tail light on this car, I'm quite happy. It does look quite rough, but drifting is, a, uh, is an adrenaline filled wall smashing kind of sport, so. That's all right, fix that one tail up and we're off to go. <laughs> Corey! Corey! <laughs> Ooh! Boo! <laughs> boom, boom, boom! Now whether it shuts again or not, I don't know. Thank you, mate. <laughs> what to do with that? In the boot here, we have R33 uh, coops have, coops, coops, am I getting it right? Coop, coop, sedan, coop, coop, sedan, it's a coop, isn't it? Sedan, sedan. It's, sedan. <sighs> it's been a long day, all right? Been a long... <laughs> R33 sedans have a uh, rear mounted battery. So as standard, um, they're in the boot. So not an engine bay, something we probably didn't go over when we were out the front, but your battery needs to be clamped down nice and solid. Can't have that flying around. Um, can arc out and cause sparks and sparks and fumes and fuel don't go well together. In the back here, um, we've got a wiring schmuzzle, but she's safe. Everything's isolated, everything's nice and secure. So I don't have too many issues with that. There's no wires touching here. There's no fuel exposed. We do have a surge tank mounted up here. All fuel lines are secure. It's actually quite a quality surge tank. So um, I don't have any issues with that. Everything's nice and mounted, really sturdy. So I think Jason's given this car a, a test of its time bashing against the wall. So if nothing's fallen out yet, I'm pretty happy with everything this car has. Uh, you might be wondering what this is. It's an isolator switch. So we don't worry too much about this switch on the boot here. That's not a part of our regulations. That's, uh, that's for another competition, it's a state level competition to be able to, if there's anything wrong with the car, it's on fire. Um, maybe powers live to the chassis or whatever, they can turn the car off at the boot when the safety arrives. So you guys don't need to worry about that one. That's uh, not in ASA regulations or not at a keeper read event. Alrighty, moving on inside the weapon. This car has a full cage set up. So there's a few different rules with cages at, at keeper read events and ASA affiliated events is um, you can drive our events if you do not have a cage. That is fine, you, you must drive on your own and you cannot drive in tandem with another driver. So it's just single run off the start line, you can drift, um, no mates in the car and cannot tandem. Moving on to getting yourself your first cage. Uh, this, this car has a full cage, like I said, but the back half is what we call a class one or half cage. Uh, what that means you can do is you can take your mates in the car, 
um, in, excluding any of the front stuff, it's just the back half, so the main hoop and the down rights and the crossbar. That is class one cage. It means you can take your mates out, you can, um, you can drive single off the start line, not with anyone in a tandem, um, but you can have fun with your mates in the car. So as we move down the line towards this full cage, um, we step up to a class 1A cage. What that is, is the back half, so the main hoop, and then a side intrusion. Uh, new rule uh, this year means that if you want to tandem with your boys in the car, you must have a class 1A cage, which is half with the side intrusion. What that means is if you do take an impact to the side of the car, uh, this bar is designed to stop you from breaking your legs. Um, most of the cars at our events will have either a half cage on a Friday night, we'll have either a half cage or a half cage with a side intrusion. Uh, it's not too often you see too many full cages. However, if you are going the full route and you're um, at that point where you're happy to put a full cage and spend the money in your car, it is quite a good option, keeps you nice and safe. You never will know what's gonna happen at the track. It's, it's safety is, is paramount and you can never be too safe. So a, cage, a full cage is not a bad idea. However, if you wanna keep a budget on it, half cage with a uh, side intrusion is a good place to start so you can take your mates in the car. So moving on, Jason's got a detachable steering wheel here. Um, so things I'm looking for in the car is obviously, again, common sense, nothing loose in the car. Um, this sitting around at the factory, but something like this in the car is a hazard. Uh, if you hit a wall or hit someone else, this could fly out and you know knock someone out. So um, I'd expect Jason to get rid of all this stuff in his car before he goes out on the track, otherwise it would not pass scrutineering. Uh, steering wheel on, it's nice and, nice and secure. Um, no play, no steering column play. I can feel everything's really nice here. Uh, seat, again, there's no play in that seat. We cannot have play in the seat because if you crash, uh, you're strapped in with all your harnesses in your seat, your seat can actually detach and that's a problem. So harnesses, everything's mounted up to the harness bar in the back. Um, again, there's no tears or rips in any of the harnesses. They're, they're in date, I can see here. Yep, in date till 2024. So that's, that's all I'm looking at as far as seats go. From the harnesses, we're looking over at this bad boy here, this little red fella. Um, fire extinguisher must be mounted through the body of the car. If I can get him out. <clears throat> this is mounted through the chassis of the car, so into the trans tunnel. Wherever you've got it, it's gotta be securely mounted. Once again, falls back to anything loose in the car, flying around, um, becomes a hazard. The fire extinguisher is in date functioning and has not been used. Um, you must come with a new fire extinguisher to a drift day. If you do not have one of these, we will not let you out on the track. Look, it's not a big fire extinguisher, but if you have a fire in the cabin or, um, you know, it could save you. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen anyone have to use one yet as, as a matter of life or death, but um, you never know. Safety will have fire extinguisher when they come over to your car, so if it does catch on fire, um, They'll, they'll put out a proper fire, but it's always good to have one and you must have it. So moving over to down in the footwell here, it can be a little bit hard to see, but I'm checking the pedals are all secure. Um, everything's, as I've said repeated times throughout this, this vlog is, everything's just common sense and it's safe and secure. Nothing's falling off the car. It's, it's very much runs on common sense at the Keeper Reed events and, and most of the drift events in, in Victoria. So. Um, as a rule of thumb, if, if you think it's dangerous, it probably is. And if you're gonna rock up, and we'll probably tell you the same thing. So. Right, the last thing you need to go out on the track, your car's passed its scrutineering, it's all good. The boys are gonna check your helmet. Um, the helmet is an important one. Uh, new rule that's come in, we cannot use motorbike helmets. So guys, if you rock up at a Keep It Read event, make sure you guys have got either an open face helmet, a full open face helmet, motorbike, motorbike style helmet, but not a dirt bike helmet with the beak. Um, not allowed at the events and they're gonna be phased out this year. So this is Jason's uh, Pro Spec helmet, the one he wears when he does the state level competitions and D1NZ and stuff. Oh, oh, 
<laughs> nah, this is an old one. We're back when you cash the barrel wags, we had to uh, replace it because this one, once it's gone through a crash and he's hit his head in the car, um, you cannot use it anymore. What happens is the structure inside the helmet, the foam underneath the padding, it became, becomes jeopardized and then it's no good in another crash from there on. So if your helmet hit gets a uh, any type of major impact or reasonable impact, uh, it's not to be used again. So what I'm looking for on this helmet when we when we get it at scrutineering is that it has it meets all the standards. Um, this one's SA 2015. There's a few standards on the AASA website. If you're not sure about a helmet, make sure you go and look up the helmet through the regulations. Uh, they tell you what you can and can't use and what meets the Australian standards. Uh, so the next thing after you've got your helmet on, um, before you jump in the car and go out and track, you will need long pants and long long pants and long long pants and long sleeves. Um, that is a, uh, that's to keep you protected if there's any minor fires inside the car, it gives you just enough time to get out. So unfortunately you can't go out in your thongs and your, and your stubbies and your, your wife beater. I wish you could, shirtless. Um, I'll wear my dress. Long sleeves, long pants and closed shoes. You cannot wear your Crocs, can't wear your thongs. Um, again, fire hazards. Uh, just gives you, and we know it's not fully protective and it won't stop a fire getting to your skin if you're in their car for a long period of time, but it might just buy you enough time to get out of the vehicle while the safety crew comes to put that fire out. So that's it. That's pretty much all you guys need to get out on the track and have a blast with your mates. So that's it for the uh, scrutineering section of the, the drift guide. So if you want to brush up on any of those skills, you missed a part, make sure you head back, suss them out, and I'll see you at your first drift day. Look, tell a man no trouble, I don't want beef man, I just want vibes Big man like me, no need for the telephone hype I got too much getting online, one rule then let them on sight Wrong move, I bet they gon' ride, no need for the telephone hype Nah, no need for the snoozing, big whip outside, I'm cruising Big stick inside, no losing, better watch out for the snake and Judas